Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, why do we wear the turban as opposed to the kifa? We're on the, on the Wahhabi ideology now. <laughs> yeah, the, the turban is the crown of the believers. The turban as it's wrapped and has the sunnah of a tail, it's a meme. So when you write meme you go down, loop and down. The meme is the turban, it's the crown for the believers. As a result there are many realities within the, the turban and the reality of being Muhammadiyoon that you're wearing the Muhammadan sunnah, the Muhammadan way and inheriting from the reality of a meme in which all this creation is hidden within the meme. Baina Ahad wa Ahmad is this Bahr al-Muhit of Muhammad, is the meme. Means the secret that only Allah understood that Allah put everything in the secret of this meme. Now kifa is a hijab and Prophet asked, don't imitate women. Don't wear like a woman and from behind you can't see if this is a man or a woman. So this is not our way. And go back to pictures that were 75 years or further back, it was all turbans, all beautiful turbans making hajj. This system of, of covering long is to come against the nobility of the turban and the protection of the turban. That when, when decisive destruction is coming and the believers want the support of Allah well they better be in the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad in which the battle of Ahli badr the battle of Badr when they were outnumbered and Prophet describes in the holy hadith the thousands of angels were coming. He was describing the angels are wearing turbans. They were coming in black turbans, yellow turbans, white turbans and each of them coming with swords to send their support for Sayyidina Muhammad and the holy companions. Means it has an immense reality and that's that system of… Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nur John, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The sheet and looking like hijab and not knowing from behind is this man or is this woman, it doesn't have the haybah of the sunnah. And anyone who revives the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad is given the ajr and the reward of 70 martyrs. As soon as you wear a ring you're asking, Ya Rabbi I want to revive the holy sunnah of Prophet because maybe it's not known everywhere I'm walking, grant me that ajr and that reward. And this is a gift for us. As soon as you have the asa and they would always bother us, we go to masjid and those, those people would ask, why are you wearing asa, Ya Musa and they even quoting Qur'an. Sorry, people are crazy, what are you talking about? I'm exactly like that. I lean on it, I move my sheep with it, exactly like Sayyidina Musa had answered, that's the exact answer. But they come against the sunnah, why? Because the Dajjal system, not the individual person, maybe their individual soul innocent, but the one whom overtook this person, because you're dealing with the Dajjal, I know why he's doing it. Because he wants to take away the power, he wants you to leave that power. 
Well, this Cain, this Sunnah had the ability to open the, the, the ocean for Sayyidina Musa What do you think it has to do for Ummat and Muhammad And that when he was in fear he threw it down and Allah made it to be a dragon. What will Allah do for the love of Sayyidina Muhammad When you carried the Sunnah as a love and ishq, Allah said, if, if I gave Nabi Musa a dragon I give you two because you're ashiqeen of Sayyidina Muhammad there's no comparison. If the ring of Sayyidina Sulaiman gave command of the angels, the freed and all of the spiritual beings, what will the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad open? Everything will be under the command. It's just the time that Allah will open it. We're in that time. Things are happening on this earth. That's why they're pr- pushing and promoting that keep the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad Immensity of its powers can't be understood. Don't neglect one thing for your aql in your brain. That the siwak, what type of key this has? This siwak has the ability to make a servant into a wali. Because they use it not for clean teeth, nifaqi fi qalbi wa shirki khafi. That, Ya Rabbi take away my hypocrisy and my lies and my hidden shirk. What is hidden shirk? In which you judge like Allah. Well you sit down and you say, oh you're going to Jahannam, you're haram, this haram, this haram. And they sit and they judge like Allah said, so don't judge Allah's creation, leave the judgment for Allah Teach rahmah and mercy. So it means everything from the Sunnah of Prophet has an immense secret, immense reality, immense power. What's opening upon this earth now of this Dajjal system and they're declaring their, their whatever. It's not me saying it, they're saying it. If they believe that, well, they're going to take some actions. And as a result the believer only has the love of Allah and that should be manifesting the love of Sayyidina Muhammad Qul inni kuntum tuhibbun Allah fattabiyuni wa yuhibbukum Allah. If you follow him وسلم, Allah will grant us love wa qafur raheem and I forgive you your sins, I'm a forgiving. So it's immense, immense realities. We pray that Allah will address us and bless us from them, inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi, uh, you had recently said that Dajjal will claim that he's Hashim. Can you please explain that a little bit more? Yeah, we don't want to go on the radar too much but yeah, he's going to declare he's God. He's going to come first and I'm here to save you. Looking nice, handsome. He's not coming with horns and a clown suit. He's coming looking nice, talking away about Allah and people amazed, astonished. He's going to be victorious and have many signs and many miracles. And then he's going to, after a battle and several battles, he's going to declare himself a prophet of Allah Now we're, they're going in that direction. Well there's no prophet after the prophecy of Sayyidina Muhammad So it's beneficial for them to negate the reality of Prophet That's why they have been for the last 60 years that madhab there has been negating, negating, negating the importance so that they could reach that point and say, let's just not talk where we have a difference. And then when he's victorious he say, he's the Prophet of Allah and then when he's victorious in, in convincing that he's going to say that he is the Lord on this earth and the Creator God. So, astaghfirullah alazim But by then people are already lost. That's why we said, awliyaullah they kept the key. And the key is the ishq and muhabbat of Sayyidina Muhammad when they described that faith would be like burning coal. Well faith was that you had to love Prophet more than you loved yourself. So somebody's about to take that away. 
not concept of Allah be taken away because shaitan loves Allah. But what shaitan has a problem with is Adam and Bani Adam. And that's why they make disclosures of everything they do. Now you're hearing people say, oh they make disclosure of every type of wickedness they do because shaitan their head head boss loves Allah and fears Allah. He knows there's an accountability. But if you give the disclosure, so they chose it. The cigarette pack says, if you smoke it you're going to die. Can you go to Allah and say, oh this shaitan he did this to me? He said, no, no you're incorrect Ya Rabbi, I gave a disclosure. He chose to do that, he chose to harm himself. So no, they're giving disclosures because shaitan fears Allah And what Allah wants for the believer is that you keep your ishq and muhabbat for Sayyidina Muhammad and never put that down. And that becomes the great battle, the great battle is to keep that ishq and the love of Prophet InshaAllah Allah grant us to ahfazuna to guard us inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Please forgive us and can you please explain <laughs> more in detail when you were talking about uh, banks will close and when we should expect it? My husband is so angry at me for starting this conversation. Yeah then leave it, don't create any problems at home, <laughs> don't believe, don't believe. You can only put a reminder that if anything happens, say, I told you, <laughs> you may see, they'll be much more angrier, yeah. No, there's no prophecies that we're not giving any things. All, all they're giving of isharat is that, look to the past, you'll see the future. So anyone who wants to understand life, look to what's happened in the past. So every time they want something to happen in the past, they have uh, big changes. So if you live according to how Prophet describes, we should be safeguarded through every type of calamity. So Mawlana Shaykh would come to teach for many, many years, 50 years, 60 years, store in your house like a market. Don't live like a two-day supply, put a lot of beans and rice and things that you need to survive, not, not your, your like chocolate bars, things that you need to survive and that can be stored for months then you use a little bit and restock. So everyone's home should be like a little pantry of emergency supplies. If you have children, diapers, uh, essential necessities, water. So in the East Coast we had earthquake preparedness or floods and tornado preparedness, California's earthquake preparedness. So they, they tell you have that, have a backpack with emergency supplies in case there's an earthquake, things shaking, you have your supplies, you have clothes, you have all of these things, it's a sign of faith. If you're believing that, that judgment day is coming, between now and judgment day they send for us Armageddon. So it's a sign of iman that the, the believer not to be caught huh, like they didn't know because then Allah say, you didn't believe. So when you believe you have to have external signs of belief. Belief is not for us that, I, I, I love Allah, don't worry about it. No, that's what other people say, other religions say. Us is put your head down and start praying. Go out and do these actions, go do like this, go do like this because our faith has to be in action. So this belief of last days is no different. You should have money always in your home. Are you relying that the ATM is going to be open? So what's hard to believe about that? Don't empty your accounts, no one said that. But do you have money in if for let's say a week or two weeks the bank is not going to be open? How do you plan on buying food and how do you plan on going and getting gas? You don't have any preparation for, for a time maybe there's no electricity or some sort of difficulty comes, power goes off. So people of faith they always have in moderation, this is not anything extreme where if we say take vitamin C and then Yahya would take the whole bottle thinking that if I took 20 of them I'm going to be cured instead of if two were good, 20 is better, no. We are the middle ground people, everything is, is, is middle ground that we are conservative on everything and alhamdulillah you have a percentage of cash, you have some gold, you have food supplies and whatever happens is Allah's will. 
and the rest is in Allah's hands to sustain us and to keep us going. So it's not a matter of lacking faith and then all of a sudden they buy entire store rooms and they want to live like 20 years underground, oh what you planning? If we're going to die we're dying, better to die we go to paradise. But if it's going to be a little bit of inconvenience then at least prepare on this earth for the inconvenience, inshaAllah. It's a sign of faith, nothing comes, the reward comes from Allah that that servant had iman and faith. They heard it, they acted on it, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam uh, This was uh, a question uh, in response to one of the shorts on ancient jinn wars. Mm. Sayyidi, how do we know we are accidentally burning them, the jinn? How do we get this awareness? How do you know if you're accidentally in one of their wars? Or burning them. Yeah, or... No. No. Well that's again following the adab of Prophet so those were the adabs that don't do certain things at night, don't relieve yourself under trees and on streets and, and don't uh, enter into dark areas without announcing yourself. When you go to the facilities to, to, to wash and to relieve oneself, especially for men, sit down. When, when those things splash, those jinn burn and get killed. So one of the adabs of sitting and the hikmah of sitting is that you don't want to create a situation because some of them live in the bathrooms and if they get burned because of that action, those are shayateen and they come after you for a lifetime, generational attacks against people and drive them to go mad. So all of the sunnah of Prophet was a relief from all of these. Don't throw hot water out at night, don't announce yourself at maghrib time, close the shades of your home so that they're not looking in. They can attack from a distance, they're not like human creatures. From a distance they can send a nazar like arrows from their energy and attack. So when maghrib comes we close the windows of the house. And they're all, these are in hadith, Google the hadith of maghrib and jinn and maghrib and difficulty. So all sorts of nefarious activities begin as soon as the sun draws down. Why Allah made these vampire movies? Allah made because said, yes because Allah inspired these people that they're going to make these things. So in everything Allah must have some sort of a message for believers. So that these shaitans they don't like the light, they don't operate in the light. So the barakah and the blessing of light and when that light goes that's why you hear the birds crying, قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقْ مِنْ شَرِ مَا خَلَقْ وَمِنْ شَرِ غَاسِتِينِ إِذَا بُقَلْ وَمِنْ شَرِ نَفَثَّاتِ فِي الْغَدْ شَرِ حَاسِدِينِ إِذَا حَسَدْ Means that for every type of difficulty is coming out in this darkness. So then the believer takes the precaution, they have the wudu and if they don't have to go out at night then they don't go out. If they're going home and they're going to their, their job then alhamdulillah. And then they have the awrads and recitations that when they leave their house asking Allah protect them if they're having to go out at night. And when they come back into their home asking for protection and that whatever was bad to be washed away and and uh, that badness not to enter into their homes. So living that life and that way of Prophet alhamdulillah that was the immense energy teachings, so advanced that now it starts to come out. When people are at a point in which they want to understand energy, the sunnah of Prophet is the mastery of all of these teachings for all of these different types of people. So it's immensely uh, amazing how to sleep, how to wash, how to cover, how to wake up, everything in the way of Prophet was all for advanced energy training and now they're understanding it. As Salaam Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Sayyidi, uh, during meditation when hands are ignited during the meditation can you put them uh, or the right hand on the kalb? Yeah, if you feel energy in your hand you can put on your heart so that you feel the energy within your heart and then you're breathing and processing the energy. But always try to keep one hand down that you're grounding. As energy is coming in you want negativity to be pushed out so that both energies are not coming up. That was the symbol of the asa, asa is a three prong. So the two feet like an electrical outlet, the two feet are the two prongs. So when you're dealing with energy 
Then the Kain, the Asa is the third that grounds the negative energy and that's why then they hold the Asa with the shahada finger like that and it grounds that all the positive energies that they're bringing in and all the negative energy of the earth is coming so they're sort of purging all the negativity out so that it doesn't trap within their system. So this is the, the concept of energies and grounding and, and how to ground one's energy inshaAllah. A couple of people asked a similar question uh, related to Fajr. <coughs> Mm. Uh, as salamu alaykum Sayyidi, uh, forgive our ignorance, do we lose the blessings of the morning awrad if we complete it after Fajr? Or another <coughs> question was if they missed Fajr prayer and they did it after Fajr. Yeah, pray the qada, everything has a time and because of the timing of Fajr there's an opening. This is a blessing from Sayyidina Mahmud from Maqam al-Mahmud, the presence of Prophet is a reality from tahajjud down to fajr. So there's a faraj, there's a salvation happening at that moment. When you recite the awrad, so one is the fajr, you do the fajr, the sunnahs and all of that has an immense power during that point and that time. That, that is the way Allah gave that power, that secret. Like Laylatul Qadr is Laylatul Qadr. Now if I do different practices the next night or, or next weekend, is it, does, does it have the same power? No, Laylatul Qadr is Laylatul Qadr. But it has blessings because you don't say that, you know, don't do good deeds. So that fajr has its own secret and the energy coming. Now from these big awliya who gave us the etiquette and awrads, that's what they're reciting in the presence of Prophet because their faraj and their movement is into the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad whom is their imam in the presence of Allah So the, what they recite is to unlock their soul to be in that presence. Those whom copy them then is following with them in their reality. Because Prophet described, you will be with whom you love. So when we copy it's a sign of love. As a result Prophet gave that secret, you'll be with them because you love them, you're copying their awrads and their etiquettes. So they will attach, your love will attach to their soul and when they recite you'll be reciting and moving into that reality. Praying Fajr Qadr that you miss the Fajr, alhamdulillah, then you pray it and Allah give you the reward of that. So that it, you didn't pass the day not praying it and then it was written by the angels that they didn't pray the fajr. So always, always to do your ibadah even if it's late that it has a, a reward, has a blessing. But the rewards and the secrets are different but you know, in, in that category then alhamdulillah anything coming from Allah is great and beautiful. Nothing can come from Allah's Divinely Presence that's not beautific. Now it can be much more beautific but it's still going to be great from Allah whatever comes. So alhamdulillah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, how one can clean the iron in their body? Is there any relationship with cleaning the iron in one's body and getting rid of destroying their idols of their 360 lataif? <coughs> Yeah, the 360 lataif, these are the, the energy points of the body. So the iron within the body and the iron within the blood because shaitan is moving in the blood. Your nazma, qudra, chi, whatever people are calling this, the energy flowing through our system is flowing through what? The blood. That's why Prophet describes shaitan flows through your blood, right? So it's going to use the water as a conductor. Shaitan is going to move through the same conductor that you're using for qudra. That's how Allah created the physiology. So the energy is going to move through your water canals based on what? 
based on the iron within the blood. So that little microscopic metal that's moving is allowing the energy onto that metal and it moves through the system. And if that metal is dirty and contaminated, shaitan is then hijacking that energy and also moving through the system. And he's like a… like when you see those raft rides, when there's a lazy, ra lazy river, they call them is a raft where they're on this intertube and they're just going down this water slowly. Shaitan's like that. He's sitting on top of the, the cell of blood because it has a little bit of iron on it. He sits on that iron and tries to make that energy to be negative, to dirty the iron. And he rides it all the way till he hits the heart. When he hits the heart, that's the command, that's like the kingdom's uh, throne, what they call the throne room in a big palace, there's a place in which the king sits. The throne room for insan is his heart. Shaitan is coming into the heart through the blood. So as he's entering in, if he goes into the heart, he creates a corruption and attacks the heart. And that began to go all over and smashing everything. And that's the danger, shaitan enters into the heart, he creates them all the difficulties within the heart until enough of them can come and begin to sit upon the heart of that servant and begin to give the command in which everything within them is from the command of shaitan. So what Allah gave to us is in this understanding of energy, dhikrullahi tatmayna qulub, that the dhikr of Allah is a furnace of fire. And that zikr when it's activated in the heart, you Allah, Allah, Allah. And when else do you say Allah? What is the strongest zikr of Allah Inna Allahi wa malaikatuhu yusalluna ala nabi. Allah says, my zikr is to pray and praise upon Sayyidina Muhammad and by how? Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. As soon as we imitate Allah's zikr and make that salawat, the heart is a fierce fire, completely ignited with a light. That light when shaitan sees that, he's trying to get off of that blood because he knows if he enters into that heart with that fire, he's burned. And that's why tatmayna qulub. So the imagery is that he's coming towards the furnace, he sees it lit with the dhikr of Allah he's trying to escape. And if he enters into that, the zikr will burn the blood, will burn the shaitan and begin to purify the iron. Instead of it being rusty, will be cleaned and purified. The one whom busy all day long doing dhikr, they're a continuous lit up furnace in which shaitan is having immense difficulty with that person because he can't ride in, in their blood system. Then go eat good, eat halal, drink, make du'a on your food, he even has less, less ability to ride into the blood. And that's how the wudu of the inside is more important than wudu outside. If you wash only outside but you didn't wash inside, the dhikr is the wudu of inside. So when they make dhikrullah, it's the wudu of inside their body. That wudu burns the shaitans and burns them from entering the heart. And then the hijama is to get rid of the dirty blood and those are the points upon the back in which the shaitans land upon the back and they make that iron to be dirty. Why? Because they want the dirty blood, dirty iron circulating in the body so that shaitans can ride on that iron. So yeah, this is all about the satanic attack inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil azat amma yasifoon wa salaamu ala mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa basiri Surat al-Fatiha. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, 
be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.